Hello everybody. Today I'm going to walk you through Mass Transit's most simple example, which is the getting started example. Or, sorry, <laughs> it's the in-memory sample. The in-memory sample requires nothing to be installed. It's very easy. It's not even really going to be like a lot of code to write. It's going to feel probably a little underwhelming, but it's everything that you need to start putting together the pieces of a Mass Transit-based application. Now, thankfully, we even make things pretty easy with uh, the, the .NET template support. So the first thing that you'll want to do is go ahead and in, uh, install the templates for Mass Transit. Mass Transit .templates. And I already have them installed, but you can see here's the variety of templates that are provided. Once you have those installed, you can now say .NET new MT worker, and we're going to call this getting started. From there, we'll CD into getting started. And now we're going to fire up Writer. Okie dokie. With that done, we have a very simple program CS. I'm not going to go over the uh, the hosting extensions by Microsoft and instead kind of just drill straight into the services. What we're going to do is you'll see we're adding mass transit and then inside the Lambda, we're going to go ahead and set up a bunch of configurations and all of these don't really matter for today. So I'm not going to go into those and instead we're going to focus on that we're using the in memory tran uh, transport. So nothing to set up. It's all in memory. This one is really great to use for testing as well. It's extremely fast, but like anything else that's kind of in memory is definitely not a production level transport. So you're done, right? We've already set, this is everything you need to get Mass Transit up and running. Well, everything you need except for a consumer and a message. And for the consumer message, we have, of course, .NET new, MT consumer. This is gonna make a very unimaginatively named consumer and message for us. The message, I'm going to go ahead and just rename to hello message. And I'm going to change the value to name. And for the consumer, uh, this is where this is where the magic happens, right? When the message arrives on your transport, this is the method that's going to get invoked. You can think of this like your MVC controller. This is the controller piece in that model. Today, we're just in kind of the homage to the classic beginner example for everything. We're just going to log hello world to this to the console so for this we're going to go ahead and pull in the ilogger from mass transit extensions logging getting started consumer go ahead and do that and then we're just going to say logger.log information hello name say so just like the consumer is very similar to a controller, the consume context is kind of your analogy to the HTTP context. And instead of a body, we're going to have a message. And in this case, it's already deserialized for us. Um, it's already ready to go for us to start working with. We don't have to do anything else. And we're just going to pull off the name property from that message. And then we're going to go ahead and return task.completed. Now, you could imagine in here that there is a bunch of other work going on. The consumer is inside of a scoped container. So when you start to get to your services, those will be scoped just like a controller. If you're using EF Core, you're going to automatically have all that transaction management goodness. So it's a really nice place to just start putting your code and to start you know, pulling things over from the controller in your MVC framework into the consumer. The all, we also have a uh, consumer definition. Now with distributed, with systems like mass transit, there's an awful lot of dials and knobs that can be set on things like retries. There's just a bunch of, there's a bunch of things. It's more than we could probably put in attributes unless you wanted like a wall of attributes before you got to your consumer. So instead we have this sibling class called a consumer definition that will go ahead and do all of that configuration for you. 
with that, now that we've got our consumer, the next thing that we need is something to publish a message. For that, I'm going to use the handy dandy background service. So I'm just going to call this worker and I'm going to have this pull from the background service. Go ahead and implement the missing member. And we're going to do a, uh, da -da -da -da. we'll do a while loop. So while stopping token, I can't, so while a cancellation has not been requested, I'm going to publish a message. Now, because mass transit is uh, async from the top down, everything is kind of async by default. So when you see bus.publish, you're going to then say new hello message. Name is, of course, going to be world. And because we are async everywhere, we also can take the cancellation token. And then I want to, of course, put a little bit of a wait here. Oh, it's task sleep. Do, 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 delay. And then we'll do a delay for a thousand seconds and stopping token there as well. All right, so that's our worker. Now we just need to go back to the program and in the services, we're going to add a hosted service, which is our worker. All right, if I did everything right, this should just work. So let's go back to our terminal and .NET run. All right, let's get everything built up and there it is, we see our very simple, very basic mass transit demo is complete. We are using the in-memory transport. We have everything set up, all the infrastructure is done. And now with, dot, uh, with mass transit eight, you can see that the amount of code that you have to write is just very, very simple. So if you do have any questions about this, feel free to hit us up on Discord or hit us up in the GitHub discussions. Uh, you can look forward to more of these covering the other transports in follow on docs. Thanks.